Would you like to know what is insecure avoidant attachment and how you can heal it? Hi, I'm Antje Boyd, founder and creator of the Magnetize Your Man Method. And look, while you may have like more of an avoidant attachment style, uh, you may also have some anxiety inside of you as well, which comes from that insecure part inside of yourself. So let's talk a little bit more. What is the avoidant insecure attachment style and how you can heal it? The definition is the insecure avoidant children do not orient themselves to the attachment figure while investigating the environment. As a matter of fact, they oftentimes show much more a sign of independence versus interdependence or of course codependence. So it's kind of like the opposite of the anxious attachment style. And so some of you are probably watching this because you're maybe dating an avoidant and insecure attachment style, or you may have a child that's an insecure avoidant attachment style, or you like have maybe a part of you that feels a little bit more avoidant. So let's go ahead and dive right in and really uncover the secrets of the insecure avoidant and how you can heal that. So secret number one is cope with emotions and use them as data. You see what happens is with an avoidant attachment style is that they usually cut off the emotion, right? When things get too hot, when things get too intimate, they just don't feel safe enough. The keyword here is indeed safe to actually stay with your emotion. Now, instead of making such a big deal of the emotions and making such a massive interpretations and then building resistance as a consequence of that, just simply use it as data. Be curious about it, experiment with it, not more, not less, and just use it more objectively and really see, wow, I got a little jealous here, or huh, I got a little angry here, or wow, I actually found that I was a little bit disappointed, even though I did not really notice that. You see what happens with the insecure avoidant attachment style is that oftentimes, not only did they get irregular response, Sometimes they didn't even get response at all from their parents. Think about the cry out baby method as an example. That oftentimes breed a bunch of babies and a whole generation that are anxious and avoidant as well. So this is what you want to do as really using the emotions as data versus something that's sort of like dangerous, right? Just remember, it got really dangerous when you had that hope that your mom would um, feed you or would respond to your needs, which essentially she didn't. But before you cut off, you actually went through a deep level of despair, okay? And that, that feeling you don't want to feel ever again. And instead, you distance yourself. Secret number two is tolerate other people's behavior. Now, what oftentimes happens is like, I'm good, right? The, uh, the avoidant insecure is oftentimes just really backing off. I'm good. I don't need anyone, right? It's sort of like this really, I, this independent and self-achieving sort of like approach to life, right? And not only that, but it's also not really serving you because if you do want to have a deep connected long-term relationship, then you have to learn to tolerate other people's behavior versus like cutting them off right away, unapologetically, I'm not going to have anything to do with that. That's not going to work for you, right? So, you know, whether you have a girlfriend, um, if you watch this as a, as a man, you know, who's um, who, who is like sometimes maybe even a little clingy or a little needy, right? Or maybe you have, uh, or, you know, of course, if you watch, watch this as a woman, um, you know, maybe you feel like, you know, your, your boyfriend or partner may be too slow. He's not really making decisions. Um, he's, he is fill in the blank, right? Then you want to actually find that tolerating that behavior versus sort of like cutting it off right away. Because look, I had actually avoid an attachment style women that I have worked with and I really worked with them and I helped them to just continue, just step by step, right? To tolerate a little bit more people's behavior and lean in a little bit more, even though it may not feel as comfortable. Secret number three is choose more supportive environments. So look, for you, it's really important to have freedom, space. So you want to find that in your friendship circle, 
right? You want to find that in your sports and your activities and potentially even in your work, right? So maybe it works for you to even have like physical space from the office or to have more in agency and independence where you work, right? Um, or you, more, you have more girlfriends who are also giving you that space as well, right? So you really want to think about like, how can you choose more supportive environments that really help you to sort of nurture that part that wants to have this freedom and wants to have this space, right? So oftentimes, you know, well-meaning girlfriend who actually notices when you're like not have like the best day and you actually need to nurture more yourself, right? And who maybe even like anxious on the other hand and, um, and who, but who says, Hey Lucy, you know, I know this is so important for you to take care of yourself right now. So I love you. Let's talk next time. That would be a good example of having a supportive environment. Secret number four is find freedom in what you do. This goes along with that supportive environment, but I want to take it a step further. So I'll give you an example. So when my husband and I got married, that was about six years ago, it's going to be six years ago in a couple months, um, we did a shadow ceremony the night before our wedding. Now, my deepest, darkest fear was, oh, by the way, that's what you do in a shadow ceremony. You actually acknowledge each other's deepest, darkest fears and monsters. And as you can imagine, I can already imagine if you are more and avoid insecure, you're like, oh, what are you talking about? You, I'm not going to share any of this. Are you crazy? I need to stay in control. I need to keep my distance. But it was really cool because I got to share that I didn't feel good enough at the time. And my husband, of course, having come a little bit more from the avoidant insecure side, right, said actually like he's what the sphere to be trapped. So this is the thing where you're like, oh, I'm here, you're speaking to me. This is so true. I have this fear to be trapped, to be suffocated, right? And so what you want to learn is like find freedom in what you do. So what we did in our, um, in our actual wedding ceremony is I said with this ring, I set you free. So we were actually talking about, so hold on, how is the wedding actually setting you free even more than if you were by yourself? And so what we came up with was that I can actually take a stand for that part. Yes, we have different parts inside of ourselves. So I would take a stand for that part inside of him, right? That likes to be free, that likes to, that doesn't like to be trapped, that likes to have space, that likes to be independent. So I would take a, a stand for that. Meaning if I would notice that this part was neglected, right? He started to feel a little frustrated or maybe just a little edgy and a little, you know, aggravated how he normally doesn't get, right? Then I would be the first one before him to actually invite him to do something by himself, right? To actually go to on a recharge retreat or to just take the car somewhere, take a trip somewhere or whatever he wants to do to fill up that part inside of himself that really needs to be free and have space. With the men, it's oftentimes related to the wild man. And for the women, it's of course the wild woman. It can also be other archetypes, but that would be an example. So find the freedom on what you do. And finally, secret number five is leaning in is safe. So yes, 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 I know what you want to tell me. You want to say, Auntie, no, I'm going to lead out. As a matter of fact, I have a client right now. She's a little bit more avoidant and her husband her, is, is a little bit more, um, you know, on the, on the anxious side. And so, so what you want to do is like actually saying, okay, well, it's better to take at least just, even if you just take a couple steps forward and just take a deep breath, right? And literally just say, I'm safe, okay? And you just allow your partner to just come one step closer, not like all the way in, right? Because you need to feel safe in your bubble. You have your little protective bubble. I get it, I get it. Because you're slowly learning to trust intimacy, right? So you actually want to be like feeling it's still safe. Okay, it's still safe. It's still safe, right? As closer, the closer your partner gets, still safe, still safe. Okay, and if it doesn't feel safe, to have also have your partner stop or visualize your partner stopping or visualize your future soulmate stopping, right? And like really knowing that the partner honors your boundaries so you can slowly get adjusted to the idea of intimacy and 
partnership without a fear of losing yourself or losing your freedom. So look, if you're interested to learn more about yourself, I invite you to take my Magnetize Your Man quiz, which is on magnetizeyourman.com. And I want to recommend it because you really understand more about yourself, uh, which side of the spectrum are you on more, what do you need to integrate fully so you not only get what you really want, but you can actually have this deep connected long-term relationship with a partner and feel safe and have space and be free at the same time. All right, if you love this video, like it, share it with your girlfriends or with your friends and buddies as well. And subscribe, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Would love it very much. Much love to you. So happy to serve you. I'll talk to you next time. Take care, bye-bye.